Last time on Lessons in Love. Because I got mad emotions, flat, and I'm gonna cry every day. Young dab, and I'm gonna say that it's okay to feel sad sometimes. Yeah, and you better understand it's gotta rhyme. I only hate myself, Sad Boys 2019. Let's get the show on the road. One hundred nine days have passed. I wake up to sunlight pouring in through the window. What should I do today? Yeah, it's Sunday, right? I feel like I should check up on her to make sure she's fine. She's in work today. Maybe she's not. Haruka too. Okay, this is a little off-putting. Okay, I'm gonna go to the soccer field instead. I decide to spend yet another morning at the soccer field. I feel like I've been doing that a lot lately. It's a little taxing coming all the way to school first thing in the morning, especially on the weekend, but I've managed to somehow get used to it on account of that whole teaching thing I do. Find that with the fact that my trips here are normally pretty exhausting to begin with, and it's surprising that I'm even still showing up. Who would have thought I'd get so hooked on Bonics. hanging around an old girls soccer team? Sure, there are the skin tight shorts, the thigh highs, the toned and developing muscles. Actually, it does make sense that I keep coming here when I look at it that way. I spot the three girls I know the names of on a nearby whatever this thing is and I come to a full stop several feet away without them noticing. Yeah? You know the names of them? Prove it! Name every single one of them! I wait a moment to find out they are talking about me. They aren't. Before deciding to call out and get myself involved in the conversation. Ah, uh, hey, Miku, smile. I gotta choose? Why? Like, Karen and Kieran are zero. I don't know if that would raise it, or if this even matters. So I'm gonna say, hey, Kieran. Hey, Kieran, what's up? Huh? Why? Oh, uh, hey. I saw you coming, but I didn't really think you were gonna call out to me over those two. Yeah, what gives? Did you and Kieran become secret friends behind our backs or something? No, but we do have a sort of contract together now. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> contract? What kind of contract? Are you two working on some sort of new training regimen or something? Well, that is one way to put it. Dude. Sorry, couldn't help it. I'm confused. What other sort of contract is there? Yeah, now I'm kind of curious too. Uh-oh. Hey, uh, let's just leave it alone for now, okay? <laughs> You're acting kind of sus today. Shut up. Besides, did you have something you want to ask him? Something to ask? Oh! Hey, Karen. Hey, Karen, what are you three up to today? Uh, who's there? Open your eyes and find out. Oh, um, hey? Kind of surprised me. Didn't even hear you coming. He sensei. Why'd you call out to Karen and not me? You know she has a heart attack whenever a boy shows up. That's precisely why I called out to her instead of you or Kieran. I figured it would be funnier if Karen were to get all surprised and whatnot. And of course I was right. Am I a plaything to you? You can't just toy with my condition like that. Seems a little off to call it a condition, but I'll try to keep that in mind the next time I sneak up on you. There will be more times? Of course, I'll have you warm up to me if that's the last thing I do. Um, well, I guess if you're okay with food waiting, I... Anyway, I'm going to interrupt this special moment to bring you an important announcement. Wait, what? Hey, Miku. Hey, Miku, what are you guys up to? Oh, Sensei, we're just hanging around on the giant blue step thingy, talking about life and whatnot. Why is the soccer team having a discussion about life so early in the morning? Should you three be practicing or whatever fake game you have coming up next? Whoa. Um, sounds kind of rude when you call them fake. Well, they are, aren't they? don't count for anything. We tend to use the word unofficial sensei. Yeah, what Karen said, and besides, all games have a purpose. Even the fu- er, even the unofficial ones. If we don't keep practicing, we'll be SOL when it comes time to actually play a real game. Just out of curiosity, Miku, do you know what SOL stands for? Soul, it's a fire emblem ability. Uh, of course they do. <laughs> stands for Sensei, I hereby proclaim you the new coach of the soccer team. 
Wait, what? What just happened? Miku decided that if you showed up today, she was just going to make you the coach instead of waiting for you to agree to it. Can she do that? There is no limit to my power. <laughs> she technically can't, but are you really going to say no to that face, Sensei? What face? The one she has on now? Tremble before me, mortal! Kieran, are you sure this is the face you're talking about? What's wrong? I think she's cute when she turns into a super villain. Joking aside, I'm putting my foot down, Sensei. You've kept me waiting for far too long. Kept me waiting, huh? We've all got aching muscles just begging to be massaged by those magic hands of yours. Come on, get the plot moving already! Wait, what? Yeah, haven't you heard? Sensei is apparently a super good moose. <laughs> no, that's not me. Wait, why are you making that face? Masseuse, Miku. It's masseuse. Also, I'm just okay. I never said I was a god. Wait, Miku. I know you said it would be good to have him around, but I'm pretty sure he's not allowed to, like, touch us. I don't mind. My legs have been super sore lately. I'm sure some physical therapy will get all of those knots out in a jiff. Why wouldn't Sensei be allowed to touch us? Last Coach did it all the time, and you always talked about how great you felt after. Last Coach was a girl, though. She didn't have any ulterior motives. I can hear you, you know. Hmm. He could pause for a moment and stares deep into my soul. She doesn't believe the whole ulterior motives thing, does she? Wait a second, I do have ulterior motives. Why am I getting so up in arms about this accusation? <clears throat> Sensei? Or shall I say, Coach? Sensei's fine. Coach? Do you have any ulterior motives when it comes to the young women of the soccer team? Yeah, Sensei. You weren't planning on doing anything naughty to us, were you? Don't give me the choice. Kieran, I'm really going to need you to keep it together right now. Of course not. I won't touch anyone how they don't want to be touched. Hold on a second. I'm not entirely satisfied with that answer. Oh god, she found the loophole. What do you mean by how they want to be? Sounds good to me. You're the moose here. You know what'll work best. Miku, don't I get any sort of say in this? I'm second in command and a year older than you. You're also a year older than me, and I'm still like three times more mature than you. You still sleep with a teddy bear, Kieran. I don't want to hear it. And if you're more mature than me, how come your curfew is an hour earlier than mine? Who cares about a stupid curfew? At least I don't start crying any time a boy looks at me. So, Sensei Coach Master... Master has been added on now as well? As you can see, things can get a little dysfunctional around these here parts. Brother. So what that means is, that's our new coach, you're gonna have to keep these two in check so they stop frickin' fighting all the time. Are they really always like this? Well, not all the time, but yeah, pretty often. I try to step in when I can, but it's not like a pipsqueak who's just barely outgrown her training bra can really do much to someone Karen's size. And Kieran's kind of scary in her own way, too. Like one of those feisty types that'll pull your hair if you mess with her. Yeah, I definitely get that vibe from Kieran as well. And you're really sure about me being the coach? I think I've told you before, but I really can't be here every day. That's totally fine, oh whoa face. We can always do stuff later on if you can't make it to the field. None of us really have anything to do besides soccer and training and whatnot anyway. So if you ever want to just do laps around the park or something like that, you can always let your good old pal Miku know. Oh, actually, I got an even better idea. How about you take down our phone numbers? I second that. Take mine first, Sensei. What? Why do I get to call Miku? Kieran pulls a smartphone out from inside of her shirt and types out her contact info on it before holding it up for me to see. I type the numbers down in my phone and click save, still awaiting the next two numbers. Congratulations, you now have Kieran's cell phone number. But I don't have... I don't have Haruka's, even though I do. And remember, do you already have my number, Sensei? We've been together a lot and I'm kind of forgetful. So sorry if you already have it, I'm being weird. <laughs> nope, don't think so. Here, you can type it in yourself. Julio! Miku runs over and rapidly types her number into my phone. I'm surprised she's able to do it so quickly. I know she's full of energy, but I kind of figured that would all be saved for the field, not technology. Congratulations, you now have Miku's cell phone number as well. You and I are gonna go on ahead. Good luck trying to get Karen's number, Sensei. She's never given it to a boy before. 
Miku and Kieran start jogging toward where all the other girls are playing, and I'm suddenly left alone with Kieran. Hmm. Um, hi. You don't have to give me your number if you don't want to, Karen. Huh? I don't blame you for feeling weird around guys, especially older ones like me. If anything, I think that most of the other girls are surprisingly forward. Especially your sister. Um, besides, even if you don't want me to be your coach, I'll do what I can to make sure it doesn't bother you or anything like that. Uh, I know, okay, let her talk. I think she's trying to talk, maybe. I know you've been on the team for a while, and I obviously wouldn't want to be stepping on your toes, but... T -t -t Take my number two! Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Karen quickly nods her head up and down in place of responding. I hand her my cell, and with trembling fingers, she types her phone number in. Sure, she needs to backspace some of the digits a few times, but she gets it done in the end. Congratulations, you have Karen's cell phone number two. Wow, three phone numbers in one day. It's almost like you're the protagonist of a porn game. Of course. Why this... Nah, porn game? Where? Okay, bye. With borderline frightening speed, Karen joins the rest of her teammates and absolutely demolishes them in terms of speed as they make their way around the track. Somehow, I don't even think Miku would be able to keep up with her right now. 21. Well, none of these have really changed. Except for the shrine, so... I stopped to catch my breath after walking up the stairs to the shrine. A lot hotter than normal today. In fact, it's so bad that I had second thoughts about even coming here in the first place. I like Kum and me. This weather really needs to go. I don't see anyone else around. This they all decided it was better to relish in the comfort of their air-conditioned apartments than to venture out into this inglorious hellscape opposite weather than I am having right now. But here I am, without a clear goal in mind once again, looking for a very peculiar shrine maiden. After a bit of searching, I finally found her. It seems that this heat has managed to get to Maya as well as she hides in the shade provided by the shrine. Hey, some weather we're having, right? Haha, <laughs> am I alright? Uh. Maya doesn't answer, instead she simply sits there unflinching and unbothered by my sudden appearance. The lights glaring behind her make it hard for me to focus. Feeling slightly awkward, I call out again. Maya? You're not asleep, are you? Slowly, her eyes open and make contact with mine. Asleep. Awake. Is there any difference? Yes? I thought that if I ignored your existence entirely, you might go away. I regret to see that this is not the case. Well, I apologize for letting you down. Please sit if you're going to speak with me. You are obnoxiously tall and I do not want to put any unnecessary strain on my neck. Sure, but only since you asked so nicely. I take a seat in front of Maya and observe her posture. She sits in the perfect size of position, matching the traditional feeling of this place as if we've gone back in time. I can't help but imagine if Maya would have been any different hundreds of years in the past. In some way or another, I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna get you, get you, get you, get you. I feel as if she'd be exactly the same. You're thinking something strange, aren't you? Not anything unsavory, I promise. I did not imply that it was. What are you thinking? Do you actually want to know or are you just being polite? You'll tell me either way, won't you? Is it really that hard for her to answer a question without asking her own? I was just admiring how proper you look, that's all. I see. That's all. Yeah, at least for right now. But you know if I wind up thinking anything else, though. Please only do so if it's something more interesting than my appearance. There's only so much I can take of the prying eyes of an older man. Why do you always have to be so hostile toward me? Why do you ask? Are you offended? Offended isn't the right word. I'm more confused than anything else. Confused about what? Your outlook on the world, I guess? Which world? This one. The one we're living in. The first time I came to this shrine, you spouted some ridiculous theory about how I had been reincarnated or something. You are free to call it a theory if you wish, but we both know it's true, so I really don't know why you're denying it. Search your feelings. You know it to be true. I see everything that you see. 
Our sights and memories of the times we wake up and the times we go to sleep may not match up directly. But the sights we share in this very moment do. Which brings me back to what you asked when you first showed up today. Whether I was awake or asleep, does that really make a difference to you? I'm still not sure if I follow. That's because you're an idiot. I think it's more along the lines of her being abnormal than me being an idiot. I'll put it in terms that even someone like yourself can understand then. The key to uncovering this world, or any world for that matter, is perception itself. There's no defining law of the universe. There's no defining law of anything. Nothing is real. We all see different things and still somehow wind up in the same place. So long as that happens, do the means of how we get there really make any difference? Why do you see things that way, though? That's not normal. Did something traumatic happen to you when you were younger or something? Is there anything more traumatic than simply being born? Well, to the mother, maybe. I apologize, that was unnecessarily dark. And I'm sure it hurts you to hear that as you've been born several times now. Several? That implies more than two, which is a couple. What are you talking about? I'm a normal human being who has never once been reborn. I'm a normal teenage girl. We are but two normal people having a normal conversation on a normal day. What happened before this and what will happen after is all part of a cycle. To protect the life cycle. We'll continue living the lives we have now until the very end. And then we will start over. You will meet me and I will meet you. You will try to befriend me, but it will not work out. You will begin to fall for me, but it will not work out. It's the same for all people, not just you and I. Wait, you mean I can never be with any of the other girls? Oh no! This is all an endlessly repeating string of events, and every single one will be wiped clean after a set amount of time. So in order to avoid all that, it's best that we just live without thinking. If we don't think, we cannot hurt nor be hurt. Doesn't that sound nice and simple? That type of simple life is the one I want to lead. The sweet life of Zack and Cody. And you are merely getting in the way of things by involving yourself with me. Two of us sit there in silence for what feels like an eternity. Part of me wants to say that Maya's perception of this world is warped beyond recognition, but... In a very roundabout sort of way, I think I kind of get it. There are people who live in the moment, and then there are people who live in the past or the future. But Maya has somehow found a way to live in all three at once. I'm not sure how, but I'm certain that's the case. You've gone quiet. It be that you are finally deciding to leave me alone. Maybe. But if everything is already set on a repeating path, as you put it, what I decide right now won't make much of a difference, will it? Is that really all you took from that talk? It's so annoying. I thought it was smart. It's hot and I want to be left alone. Either sit here in silence or go bother someone else. I've already used up too much energy by speaking with you. I'm going to take a nap now. You're really going to nap while sitting like that? Isn't that uncomfortable? Hard for me to tell if Maya ever does fall asleep or not, given that her posture remains unmoving for the next 30 minutes. You sat there for 30 minutes? I would have left after like 5 minutes. Depending on how long the eternity was. Feeling bored and overheated, I eventually decided to head back into town to grab a drink. Even after leaving, though, I can feel Maya's words seeping into the back of my mind, consuming nearly every thought I have. Race 211. Maybe I should fit one more thing. What should I do? I'll go see Makoto. Decided to pay Makoto a visit at the porn shop. Of course she isn't exactly happy to see me there. The next 20 minutes trying to convince her to help me find something I could take home only to be pushed door again. Grease me like garbage. Don't know why I even keep coming back and grease the 10 though. Kieran, I'm really going to need you to stop. At least I don't cry. She, she's right. <laughs>